What's up guys, it's Chef Redakova speaking and today we'll be making something very popular, very trendy in the culinary world right now, something that you've seen all over your Instagram and Pinterest pages, we'll be making pomme souffle. If you don't know yet, pomme souffle is a puffy potato pillow, crunchy on the outside and hollow on the inside. So if you want, you can also stuff it with different other ingredients and serve it as the vehicle for other flavors. And according to Wikipedia, pomme souffle is the type of French fried potatoes, which ironically is not always the case, because today I'm going to show you three different ways how you can make pomme souffle, and not all of them require frying. The first method of making pomme souffle that I'm going to share with you today is the easiest method, well, at least in my point of view. The second one is the most common method, and the third one is the most complicated and time-consuming, I would call it a pro-chef method of making pomme souffle. I myself have not done any of them, so I will be trying this uh, recipe with you for the first time and we will see how it goes. Uh, first of all, I'm going to do all of these uh, methods and then at the end of the video I'm going to compare the three results and see if there is actually any difference. So without further ado, let's start! The first step in this pomme souffle method would be to slice your potatoes to about 3 to 4 millimeters in thickness and then use a cookie cutter to cut out some even circles. Just like this. And do reserve the potato trims, you can make a very nice puree out of it. As it goes for the potato circles themselves, dry them out thoroughly using a parchment paper and then start the frying. There are two steps in the frying process in this particular method. First, fry your pomme souffle in an oil bath heated to 266 degrees Fahrenheit for about 1-2 to two minutes. Then immediately transfer it to a hotter oil bath heated to 356 degrees Fahrenheit. And here the trick is to cook it for a long enough time, so it's properly fried and it doesn't collapse as my first did. Oopsie! The cooking principle behind this particular pomme souffle method is that the first oil bath ensures that the potato is fully cooked through and the edges of this pomme souffle are sealed. And in the second hot oil bath, the retained moisture inside this potato chip evaporates swiftly in this uh, hotter temperature and creates this air pocket inside the potato. In the second method of making pomme souffle, we need to slice our potatoes quite a bit thinner, to about 1 mm in thickness. And here the most important part actually is to make sure that the thickness of this potato slice is the same all the way through, otherwise your pomme souffle would not puff evenly. Then mix up equal parts of potato starch or cornstarch and aquafaba. Yes, some of these recipes they will call for the egg whites, but I've tested out both uh, methods and there is absolutely need in this recipe for animal proteins, so you can go for aquafaba as well. Use a brush to cover one side of each of your potato slices with the slurry that we just prepared. And then fold two of the potato slices with the slurry inside. And here is where the procedure repeats itself. Use a cookie cutter to cut out some circles and fry. And in this method we're going to fry right away in the oil bath heated to 356 degrees Fahrenheit because the initial slices of our potatoes are much thinner and they don't require so much cooking. The slurry that's sticking out a little bit on the edges of your potato chips is going to solidify and uh, seal the edges of your pomme souffle right away. And in a little while you will see how it will puff up just the same. The third method. On the one hand it's uh, pretty easy, but it requires more time and more tools. First thing you need to do for this kind of pomme souffle, you need to juice your potatoes. Then pour your potato juice on a flat, importantly, baking tray, and bake it in an oven for about 10 minutes, heated to 395 degrees Fahrenheit. Then in a few minutes, you will get something as delicious looking as this. <laughs> The next step would be to gently wash off the top layer with some cold water and uh, cool down the tray. 
during the baking process the potato starch inside the potato juice had solidified and formed a thin layer at the bottom of the tray that looks like a potato skin. Once this potato skin layer had cooled down a little bit, use a cookie cutter to cut out some circles, gently peel them off and wash them thoroughly in a little bit of water. Pat them dry on a paper towel and voila, it's almost ready. Well, not quite, they still need the second bake. Line up your potato skin circles on a silicone mat. Yes, a silicone mat, not a rack. A rack was a mistake. And bake in an oven preheated to 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about half an hour to one hour. Okay guys, it's been a long, long day for me. I've succeeded. I've managed to make all the three types of pomme souffle, test out all the three methods and here are the results. And here comes the result of our first, the easiest method of making pomme souffle. But if I'm being honest, I would actually say that this is a semi-easy method. It's not very easy to make. Take into account that you have to have two pots of oil with two different temperatures and you have to maintain those temperatures at the same time. And if you don't have two deep fryers, which is most likely the case, this is quite pain. And also this method doesn't give very reliable results. I would say that maybe 30% of all the potatoes that I was trying to puff actually puffed. So if I had to grade it, I will give this method two stars out of five. This is the second way of making pomme souffle. And it actually took me quite a while to get a hand of it. I have to play with different thicknesses and temperatures and mixtures. But once I finally mastered the technique, I have to say that all of the, all of the potatoes that I was trying to puff, they all puffed. So I would give this method four stars out of five. And one star would have to go just because you can only really make only several pomme souffles at a time. And it requires your constant attention. This one is the fanciest, the most glamorous pomme souffle that we have today. It's the shiniest and it's the puffiest and it's actually the only one that didn't require any oil frying, so it's uh, healthier in a way. And while the results of the first two methods, they taste quite the same, they taste like potato chips, uh, this one, the third one, doesn't taste uh, very similar. It's more crispy and doesn't resemble potatoes as much. It's actually, the method of making uh, this pomme souffle actually resembles a lot the method of making um, crystal bread, which by the way, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out over here. So for the looks, I'll give this pomme souffle five out of five, clearly. But when it comes to reliability, I would only have to give it uh, three, just because not all the potato skins, they puffed in the same way. Some of them puffed like that, maybe 50, 60%, and the rest just remained as bubbly chips if you know what I mean. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like it, as always, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already, and I'll see you in the next video.